Here we go. Stromquist with Control Talk, now your Smart Buildings video cast and podcast, episode 288. Kenny Smyers, the man, the myth, the legend. We are not in Kansas anymore. Uh, no, we're not. We're down here <clears throat> at SeaWorld at Orlando, Florida. And uh, it's marvelous weather, marvelous environment, great venue. I'll tell you what, there's 400 some people in the Honeywell Network here. Um, Max sold out crowd, and um, some of the best integrators that we know in the business are here, and uh, we've got some great guests, uh, and we're very fortunate to have uh, the opportunity to collect some of this incredible industry knowledge and bring it here uh, for the Control Trends community. So uh, just want to say that uh, thank you to Honeywell, and it's been a, a you know, great opportunity to learn while we go through this great experience. He's got some of the best people in the business, some of the best products in the business, and you bring them here. It's a great, great show. Yeah, it really is, and, and we're really excited. So if you're at the show, please come up and introduce yourself. We'll be covering Honeywell moment, Momentum for the next couple of days. Uh, it, it, like I say, it's really going to be super. Honeywell has got some new exciting products they're coming out with. It's going to be an awesome, awesome couple of days. If you're not here, hey, you know, tune in because we're going to be covering the show and, and introducing to people. And speaking of that, Kenny, how about introducing our first guest? Uh, Eric, I'd love to. This guy works harder than all of us put together. Uh, he started out probably about a year and a half ago, and he's taken the industry by storm, providing a, a very, very valuable resource. We have up next Phil Zito. He's the CEO of BAM, Building Automation Monthly, and he, uh, he's given a lot to our industry, and, and now uh, he, there's been real dividends, and we see a great migration. I think Phil, uh, he's got over like 3,500, 3,600, uh, you know, customers and that's extraordinary because these are students of the business this is just, we, we have a great shortage in our industry and phil is one of the resources that's taken us to the next level bring him on phil welcome man good to see you thanks so much for having me good to see you hey, phil, how you doing? to be with you all again what do you think uh we've, we've seen phil come from he's gone from zero to about 160 here in about what 18 months phil yep so uh we officially opened our doors as a full-time training company last october 2017 and uh, since then, we've seen tremendous growth. Uh, there's definitely a need in the market. And, uh, you know, I, I definitely am thankful for the encouragement that both of you all and the wisdom you all shared as we were just getting started. It, uh, it's been great. Well, Phil, we're really proud of you. Uh, you know, you're, you look, you're like us. You're a podcaster. You're a blogger. I mean, you're, you, know, you use social media to get the message out there. And you're addressing, among other things, one of the biggest needs we have in the marketplace. You know, Kenny, I've talked about the trend of the gray hairs or the no hairs leaving the industry. And the people that are coming in, they need training. There are not enough great trainers out there. And, boy, I tell you what, you have uh, really stepped up and addressed that. So tell our community about the training. And if they want to get training, what kind of training you do and how they would get, how do you listen to your services? Definitely. Thanks so much. So we provide training on the building automation fundamentals that you don't get from manufacturer training. So everything from IT, HVAC, BAS, protocols, install, programming, design. The focus of our business is helping contractors and owners to be more proficient and profitable with their staff because as you all have mentioned there is an exodus of talent and depending on what happens with the economy that could accelerate in five years that could accelerate in ten years but we're seeing all these folks who have these skills on these legacy platforms they're gonna leave and then there is gonna be a mass influx of retrofit opportunities and whatever comes in whether that's IP controls or maybe something else five years down the road that is going, if our trends continue, that will become the new industry standard for the next 20 years. Because now all these new folks will be trained on this product line, whatever it is. And if 
how we run our business continues to be the same way. So, uh, yeah. I just want to give, uh, as Eric always says, the stable data uh, to give people an understanding of uh, your background and why you're so good at what you're doing. And two, uh, as, as you prepared uh, you know, for your uh, full immersion into training, you left a pretty important job where you had res full responsibilities for a complete projects. So that's why you have such bandwidth on the knowledge of a job. But uh, I want you to go from the beginning and transition to what you see happening in the very near future. Yeah. Okay, so um, when you say the beginning, how did you get started in the industry? Okay. So I got out of the Navy in 2007, and I'm going to keep this really short for your audience, but <laughs> started as a tech, then ran ops, did some sales, and was running the technical integration program at Johnson Controls when I left. Um, you know, I was inspired by Control Trends. You all were doing, I would turn to you when I wanted to know about products, and I thought to myself, what if there was something for folks who wanted to know about being a tech, about being in sales? And seeing your podcast and video cast inspired me to create one. Never would have guessed it would have turned into a training business. But our, our first product, our book, turned into a training course and folks wanted more. And it was one of those things very much how I've seen you all evolve you are constantly evolving as you're learning. And we've been constantly evolving, seeking a lot of feedback like you all do, which is one of the things you all gave me feedback on. And we're seeing the fruits of that feedback result in courses that are actionable for our students to make an impact in their businesses. Well done. Yeah, very well done. Well, Phil, I tell you what, you're talking about, I think you, you hit the nail on the head. It's changing. It's all changing, and what you know, what we're training on is changing. You know, we're here at the Honeywell Momentum event. You're a speaker here, and you're going to be teaching people about IP controllers, why they're important, mm -hmm. and, and how to sell them. So, first of all, why are IP controllers important? And uh, kind of give us a thumbnail about how you sell it, maybe a little bit. Don't give it all away, but sell it. So I'll be honest. When I first got asked by Mark from Honeywell to do this, I was a little scared because I thought to myself what many people watching this video are probably thinking. IP controls are 20% more. It's an IT security risk. Folks aren't using their BAS right now. Why do they need more functions and functionality? So we've been blessed to having a lot of owner customers and engineer customers. I reached out to them. I said, why? And they said, what was really interesting, one of them said, I have a staff that they can barely understand MSTP. If I get IP controls, my IT group can run the IT network and the BAS controls. And the other one said, I don't want my guys having to learn IP, so I'm not going to go. And then one said, my IT department can go and really secure this because everything's flat. And then the other one said, I'm adding more IT risk. So what I've seen, what I've been able to hear from our customers is that it's all about perspective. Certain customers see it as a reduction in labor. Certain customers see it as an addition of capabilities. Others see it as more secure. On the flip side, you have those who don't. So it's not going to be for everyone, but there are benefits, as I've discovered, talking to our customers. It's all about the perspective. Well, that's great, and that's kind of where I know I, I gave you a long question, and, uh, and, and, and you just answered the final aspect of it, because we, uh, we talk about disruption. We see, uh, like, the momentum. We're all very excited to see Honeywell's next iteration of technology and how that's going to affect uh, your, your application capabilities. Uh, because let's face it, the, uh, there's three or four markets, but uh, the light commercial building solution market that Honeywell, I think, gave the first moniker to uh, involved facilities that are 50,000 feet and less. And that is where we're seeing the, the DOE, for instance, is saying, hey guys, get your, your applications geared towards mm -hmm. these building sizes, because they right now are, are so underserviced with thermostats. And, they, and most of them don't even have, uh, you know, they're not even night setback thermostats. You know, you got great states like California pushing uh, Title 24. So what we're seeing here is that Honeywell now is, is lining stuff up for this momentum 2018. Uh, you've got connections, and I think uh, having you here gives a clear indication that they're taking the next step into technology, which are IP controllers. Uh, you know, and some of the issues with IP, I think uh, with network, there's a lot of people that believe if you come onto the network and then the IT folks run that, 
it's going to be as secure as that they're capable of doing. In other words, I, 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 if you would explain, see, and one of the great things about Phil Zito is he has a site where he, these things are archived. If you do sign up and you want to get brush up on that one particular subject we just said, I remember the first uh, article I, I read of you uh, before you were successful in the training uh, world was your, your summation of the IT issues or the, the uh, network issue, the cybersecurity issues yeah. involving one of the vendors that had uh, got uh, had some big problems, and you explained exactly where it happened, why it happened, and what would have been necessary to prevent it. So, when we talk about IP controllers, which are clearly are the newest things coming, that's a big trend. As we control, we watch the trends, and we see IP controllers. Everyone got to the IP controller level, and it was important for them. Now, when you try to put security to an IP controller, is that is that kind of give the IT? people the opportunity then to be the policeman and give us the best cybersecurity measures for IP controllers? So that's a very insightful question. And it harkens back to what I just said about the benefits. It is really, we, we have to accept that there's a certain level of responsibility that we can bake into our products, which quite honestly, I think we'd all agree, we, we used to never think about it that way. Sure. Bake, and nowadays you're, so Mark uh, with Honeywell showed me the information preparing for the session about the security they baked into their product line. Cool. And that, you're seeing that, you never saw that before. But at the end of the day, it's up to the customer to take ownership of that and then implement that security. You know, the thing is, okay, we, we don't do IP, we do MSTP. You still have customers who have the server sitting under their desk. You know, you still have customers who are using the same username and password for every login, and they have publicly ex exposed IPs for their JSONs. That's not a product problem, that's a process problem. And so, to your point about your question, I, I really see that this is going to be a good thing for our industry, but our industry has to get comfortable with IT so that we can sell to IT. Very well said, yes, agreed. Well, very cool, and you know, Phil, along the same lines, I think, you know, Kenny alluded to this earlier, but the fact that, uh, you know, getting back to your training a little bit, and I'm so pumped up about hearing what you have to say at this, this training, at the Honeywell Momentum event, which I think hats off to Honeywell for finding you because uh, you're going to bring a lot to the table. Uh, you know, your background, again, Phil was a project manager, he's an engineer, so, I mean, you understand the difference between theory and reality, and, and speak a bit about that and how you sort of incorporate that in your training. Yeah, definitely. So as you mentioned, I've got a master's degree in cybersecurity, a master's degree in IT. I ran the technical integration program for Johnson. I, I worked with Creo Molex building their backnet stacks at the code level. And so I, I've seen this and then I've been out in the field doing it. The, the premise behind any good training is to start with the basics and then build upon those basics but give your students opportunities to experience that and then to apply that. And for us, online has been a great vehicle for us to do that because we're able to constantly keep things up to date and we're able to build in a lot of exercises, checklists, and processes where the students can go and apply that. Because I'm sure you all have seen this, but you go to a training and then you get stuck on a pneumatics job for six months and then your boss remembers that he sent you to the training and he goes and assigns you to that new controller or new supervisory device or new software project and then he gets mad at you because you don't remember what you learned sure. six months ago. Use it or lose it. Atrophies very quickly. Exactly. And so that has been one of the, that along with doing skills assessments and ensuring that we understand the customer's needs prior to building a learning path for their students those have really been able to accelerate the growth of our business. Well, I, I think the quality of your training speaks for itself. I, I, my understanding is there's a waiting list now, which is a good problem for you to have and not so good for the industry because we need your training out there. Uh, how do people How do people get on the waiting list? What's, uh, obviously the BAM Nation, but how do people, what's the best way for people to connect with you? Yeah. So buildingautomationmonthly.com is our site, and you can purchase course access a la carte, but for our corporate programs, if you send us an email at sales at buildingautomationmonthly.com, we'll go through making sure that you're a fit for our programs, 
And if that is the case, then we can work you into our next kind of cohort of students. And then as you go through that, go through a skills assessment, we build learning maps, and then we drive your students through that learning map. So, uh, Phil, I just got to ask, I mean, you know, you're, you're wearing the, the Packers jersey, oh, and Honeywell's not making you wear the Vikings jersey, which impresses me that you're not making you do that because Honeywell's from Minneapolis. But, you know, having spent all those years with Johnson, what has surprised you most about Honeywell and about this conference so far? Ah, the fact that they were humble enough, and I use that word purposely, to go and pull folks that are outside of their company to speak, because I, I can't speak for any one company, and because we serve so many, but I will tell you the temptation is always to stack the deck. But sometimes going and getting different opinions delivers better value, even if those opinions maybe are neutral or not necessarily rah-rah this product. And we're very much a vendor agnostic. You're very much a vendor agnostic group. That's what I respect about you all. And including folks who are of that stance, I mean, I think that speaks for a focus on customer success. Here we go. I, th I think we've seen a great shift in that, too. I, th I think one of the things that uh, <clears throat> we learned from the, the very shows, that, and, and to be quite frank, we've seen uh, Phil at numerous shows. If it's happened and Phil's there, uh, last I remember was RealCom, IBCon, and that is where we saw the surge in the customer influence. In other words, it's no longer pounding the square peg into a round hole where you're selling somebody a suite of things that they didn't really want, but they do want this, but they also want that, and they, and they also want that. And it doesn't come under the same aegis. It doesn't come from the same uh, you know, vendor. So how do you solve those problems? And, and now we're seeing, uh, I see what Honeywell is doing too now, uh, and I, I had, we had a preview of some of the things that are being shown. Of course, there's a schedule, is that they're going after customers now. They're letting the customers, voice of customers, drive in the products that the customer wants instead of saying these are the things we have and these are the things we want you to buy. And even if you don't need this, we'd still like you to buy it anyhow. But not, and there's a premium price there. But I think it's because it's, it's being driven by technology. If you can find the best product uh, and giving you the best t technology at the best price, then all of a sudden you're doing something very important for customers. We're getting more of these buildings under uh, you know, the, uh, you know, the auspices of, of some sort of a front end, some sort of an AI-driven you know, opportunity to save energy, maximize comfort keep the buildings occupied, and, and it, everybody wins. So I think, uh, I think it's a great thing. So again, I think it's great to have you here, Phil. I, I think, Eric, and I appreciate the, your, your training environment. And we, I, I'll be honest with you, I was one of the first guys that signed up for your, uh, your first course. Thanks, Kenny. Yeah, ditto Phil Zito, uh, BAM Nation. But I do have one final question. Kenny sort of alluded to AI, artificial intelligence, and sort of knowing your background. Where do you think that is vis-a-vis -vis building automation controls, and where do you think it might go? And how, how would that affect our community, the building integrators, distributors, and everybody else? Yeah. So I actually have an answer for that. And then one thing I want to make sure I include that's uh, directly related to your customer base. So first off, as far as AI goes, I think we're going, in our industry, we're going to see it very much in just accelerating the decision process. Uh, you know, it's one thing to train techs for install. It's a whole nother gambit to train them for operations and service because it's unpredictable. So we're going to see knowledge-based AI that looks at past patterns and then helps people kind of narrow down. It's kind of when you're typing into Google and it starts to learn your patterns and it fills in what it thinks you want. I think we're going to see that as one of the forefronts. You know, I'm not really caught into the, the voice adoption. I, I don't necessarily think that'll work because uh, of multiple reasons that we don't need to get into here. But the AI, I really think we're going to see it used to augment operator and technician skill set gaps. And we're going to see that kind of accelerate problem discovery and resolution. The, the one thing I wanted to add was that if I'm a contractor or a system integrator watching this right now is to think about these technologies that you all talk about on your show quite a bit that are above the server. I think that we're getting to the point very rapidly where the controls 
are fairly similar in capabilities. It's the capabilities above that that they open up, analytics, visualization, integration with facility management software, things like that. Thinking of a services mindset, how can you create recurrable revenue? I think that's something a lot more folks should be talking about but aren't because I think that's where our industry is going. So thank you so much for having me on here. It's well, an honor. Phil, it's been an honor, man. Phil Zito, BAM Nation. Become a member today. Hey, well, one of the really, really cool things about this show, man, is Honeywell is known for their great distributors. And when you have a great Honeywell employee go on and become a great distributor, that's what we call a double combination. How about introducing our guest? Okay, I'd love to. Uh, Roger Rebenack is a, an old friend. He's a great contributor to Control Trends. I mean, back in, in the day uh, when he was with Honeywell, he won many awards. Uh, he's the a first PID winner. Exactly. So he's a sensational guy. But uh, we're here to talk to something very important. Uh, yeah, I'd like to introduce the CEO of Jackson Control, Mr. Roger Rebenack. Here he comes. Hey, hey bro. Let's go. Hey, oh, good whoa, to whoa, see whoa, you, guys. Whoa. Good to see you, man. Oh, we're back God. in the saddle again. Here yeah. we, here we are. Right. Back in Control Trends, okay. USA. All right. So, Rog. You've been accused of uh, being a little anemic Guilty. lately, a little anemic, not much energy going on, man. Yeah. So I really appreciate you sucking it up here and coming on, man, and because, and, and, you know, you seem like you're a little low-key today. What's it, was this the new mellower Roger Ritt? Well, you know, Eric, uh, once you become the CEO of, of a company, you have to you have to be a little more stoic Manager in your delivery. Roger. And they've told me, Roger, you got to dial it back a little bit if you expect people to respect you and follow your leadership. And you know what I said? The hell with that. <laughs> okay, this is great because uh, he's getting he's getting our, uh, our our energy levels up where they belong. Because uh, we we were talking earlier, uh, right before you got on here, Roger, about disruption, about industry and changes, and uh, how some people read disruption as a negative thing, it's a bad thing, or whatever. And you're one of the first guys that said disruption is awesome because guess what? With every disruptive I issue and opportunity, that's what it becomes. It becomes a door that opens up, and you can go into an opportunity. So we saw some disruption. Uh, with you personally, professionally, and, and with the industry. And guess what? You came up with a great solution. And that was just at the bar last night. <laughs> right. uh, edit, second edit point. Okay, listen. My uh, reputation precedes me. No, I think what, I, what we, we really got to get across here is that you got a great, uh, you got a great solution that is coming to the forefront. It's being recognized as a national uh, opportunity, and it's called yes. Bass. Yes. And let's start right there. Tell us what Bass is and, okay. and how it's so important to you. Okay. So, um, as many of you may or may not have heard, I uh, retired after 30 beautiful years at Honeywell in March 2017. Um, Greg Erickson, Andy Held at Jack's Control, Indianapolis, Indiana, owners for 37 years of a great company, great tradition like Honeywell, uh, you know, off, made me an offer I couldn't refuse. So, uh, so I am, you know, my wife is, I think she's happy I'm home now, not traveling 40 weeks a year. So I'm home a lot, uh, I'm not traveling as much. I miss all you guys, you know, and I, and I really, I follow control trends more now. So that's been kind of cool. But uh, yeah, I'm running Jackson Control. So I've been a contractor. Oh, well, let me back up. I've been a technician in the operations side. I've been a, a, a operations leader, a, you know, an install manager, service manager. And then I was in, in the sales for the Honeywell branch. And then I moved to Honeywell Environmental Combustion Controls as a contractor development specialist. And then we, we purchased Tritium and you know I dr started drinking the Kool-Aid. And then I got the, the, the unbelievable blessing to travel the country and meet everyone uh, in the distribution channel for Honeywell, like Stromquist and DMS Smyers Brothers. And I tell you, I, I never knew that existed out there, but man, I, I just, cannot thank everyone out there that has invited me into your, your city, your building, your team, your family, your distribution, your, your contracting. It's been great. Uh, I can't thank you. You helped uh, be a big part of who I am today. Uh, now, I've, uh, I've went from being a manufacturer's rep, now I'm a distributor. So I've been around the horn. I've been at first, second, and third base. There's only one thing left to do, right? We got to score and go home, right? And the, and the way we score, is we beat our competition. And the way we beat our competition is we differentiate who we are, what we are, and we outperform, we outwork, and we outdeliver, and we delight our customers each and every day with technology and great people like out, out there in the world. So as a distributor, 
one, my big opportunity, obviously, my background, everyone knows. I, I left the security, fire, and video business and went and learned the HVAC business, controls business. And uh, as, you know, the good Lord upstairs somehow swung me back in when Tritium rolled out a security product. Here I am again. It's like a message. Well, here I am again at Jackson Control. And all of a sudden, I said to Greg, you know, the chairman of Jackson, Greg, how do you feel about security integration? How do you feel about intelligent buildings? Do you believe that the future of this business is total building technology? And he said, yes, I do. So today we are proud to announce a Jackson Control, 47 year in business, 18 employees, a great tradition, two year diamond distributor with Honeywell, a new division called Bass, Building Automation Security Solutions. The reason we kept the building automation in there is one, it's in a lot of the specs, BAS. Two, we wanted nothing to do with the traditional burglar alarm, you know, dialer on the wall, $25 a month, slam, bam, and out the door. We're professionals. We want to, we want to integrate these buildings and the way we do everything, right? So, so what Bass, the problem Bass is going to solve is one, we're going to help you sell it, design it, support it. We're going to help you kit up and build pre-kit panels. We're going to do your draw, whatever level of support you need. If you say, Raj, I've got everything from the JSOP. I can build graphics. I can do this. I can do that. I don't know what glass break to use. I don't know anything about mobile access readers. I don't know how to bring cameras or what cameras to buy. I, it's a driver. I can bring it in, Raj. But there's so many choices in security today. And nobody can deny that our, in, our world, our culture is much, much different today than it was when we were entering this market. Yeah. So cameras and all those devices, I created a security marketplace. I'm on the Tritium marketplace. I have my own website, jackscontrol.com. Uh, Bass is a division. So we have all the products, all the support, all the services, not just, hey, go out there and, and, and have a problem and call me, but let me show you how to be pre uh, Pre, you know, a he, a preactive in the whole deal. Predict, hey, I can keep you out of trouble before it happens. Hey, look for this. What kind of door lock you got? You know, what, what, how do people enter and leave the building? What's a typical week look like out there? So Bass I, is going to work with each distributor out there in the market, and we're here to help you guys uh, with all the products, solutions, and services uh, to integrate these buildings. You know, let me set that up because I want you to say more about it because there's some very specific things we want to get into. But, but I think for our community right off the bat is Raj said something very, very uh, you know, telling here. Raj is working through distri other distributors, your, your local distributor. Right. So you can just reach out to your local distributor and say, look, I saw Roger on uh, Control Trends. Uh, you know, I want to add access and security and some other products to my job. I don't know how, and Raj will probably help walk you soup to nuts through that to your local distributor. But I mean, if you're not doing that, Raj, I think they're probably missing an opportunity. Yeah, I mean, I've seen it time and time again, guys. You take a $30,000 VAV job and do four or five, six doors, eight or 10 cameras, you just took that job to 100 grand, 30, 40, 45% gross margin. It's the way to make money. It's the way to beat your competition. The more you can stay in one building and mobilize, the more content, the more margin, really the more value you add to the, your client, right? Your client starts seeing you more than just a temperature control guy. You're a building problem solver. Hey, can you help me with photo ID? Hey, can you help me with visitor management? Hey, can my boss is acting, asking about shooter detection systems. Can you do that, Mr. Honeywell Contractor? Well, what's a shooter detection system? So it's the, it's the next big wave, guys. And I know it sounds crazy being in a temperature control industry, but you've got to you know, take the blinders off and really look at these buildings holistically. And it, doesn't, it shouldn't matter to you because it doesn't matter to me if it's what sensor I need to put in the building to do something. I'm going to sense something. I'm going to control something and I'm gonna alarm something, and it doesn't matter if it's a rooftop, boiler, VAV, space temp, camera, door contact, but a shooter detection system's the next big wave. Uh, Homeland Security, United States government, FBI, they're all starting to write new uh, specifications and grant money for buildings who will deploy shooter detection sensors in the building. So they're POE, they have two technologies on board. You, Put them on the wall or the ceiling, and they're about, they cover about 80 feet, and they'll pick up a muzzle flash, 
and they'll pick up uh, the, the sound of an, uh, anything from a 22 all the way up to an AK-47. Now, I don't want to get all of us into this, you know, this world of, oh my gosh, that, that sounds scary. You know, it's like everything else we've done in this business. You learn to fish. First thing you're, you're, you did was when you got a fishing license. So we, we are certified to help you commission those systems. At the end of the day, it's a wire, it's a switch, it's a sensor, and you turn it into a, a logic. You, you deliver it in an abstract graphic or email message. And now you've not just taken care of the energy management. You're making the building more safe, more comfortable, more efficient, and, more, you know, and really a secure environment for all. So, so it's, it's the next big wave. Well, you're so right. And uh, I had a background in security, and we always talked about it. In fact, yeah. I met you many years ago, and we talked about the four Ds, you know. And I think it's very important for us to take this opportunity to tell people, uh, like we were faced with, uh, with the crime. Yeah. You can't stop crime. Uh, you, and we can't stop things from happening, but we can, we can certainly deter them from happening at your location. Yep. Uh, and then if it does happen, you need immediate detection. In the detection phase, you can't go through humans and try to contact so-and-so. He's not available. You go in voicemail here. You need to have prescribed implementation uh, measures to take. Exactly. And what you're talking about is that data on that network goes into the network and it does its job because it's been programmed and engineered to do something. So right. that shooter, uh, the acoustic sensor to me is marvelous. And I, I've delay. seen your demonstration. Yeah. And then it, delay. So then we have our, our, our you know, security was you put high security hasps and locks and, and you know, different layers of security. Right. And, and, then, yep. and then you want to get the guy, you want to detain him. So yeah, that was the four Ds. And you've taken that concept now and you've actually applied it. And I, I had the benefit of seeing your presentation. This really works. In other words, this is uh, really especially threat level management. You know, for, for the people that have to have, uh, you know, they've got obligations and risks and liabilities, and they've got to take care of schools, they've got to take care of malls, they've got to take care of things. They need this latest technology that's integrated, so it becomes data, and then data can be used anywhere across the network. But uh, it, it, again, it's not magic. But uh, you know, I just would like to say that I've seen Roger at, at work doing the surveys uh, with the community college, and we couldn't figure out how to get things done. There are challenges, by the way. We, it's not as easy as, as it sounds and looks, and it's a darn long cycle. Which is why you need bass. Exactly, so I'm saying now the components are here, the technology's here, I think you bring that span, that final bridge that takes us into the realistic marketplace of providing a holistic building, smart building, connected building, with, with, all, the, with all the inside out. Right on. So, yeah, and it's a good point, Kenny. So. Um, in the history of our, you know, our profession, there's always new technology. There's early adopters, middle adopters, late adopters. And as we're looking at the way things are changing now, all the experts agree buildings are going to be built smarter, they're going to be built safer, and they're going to, de they're, are going to have built in now. You know, the old days when we went to school, you just walked in the front door and there was the principal's office. Schools are now going to be built different. They're going to design temperature controls and safety around threat level management. So let's talk about that just for a second. Because I think one thing that I've learned over the last uh, 12 years of traveling through the towns and, and helping all, everyone you know, get more familiar and comfortable with web security from Honeywell and, and the whole Niagara framework piece is threat level management is a, is a, is a feature built in the enterprise security software built by Tradium. So it's a, you know, in the appliance build, it's a tab, but in, in your workbench, it's, it's a graphic. And, and it allows you to take 255 alarm classes and, and do something. So it could be a code red, a code orange, a code yellow, a code green. It could be a mudslide, a tornado, a hurricane. It could be an active shooter. It could be suspicious van driving around the football stadium. It could be whatever you want it to be. Now, now that we know what it is, who is interested in that. Every commercial building, every school K-12 university is concerned about who's in my building. Are they authorized? And then these, these natural disasters, these threats, these mudslides and floods and hurricanes. You know, we need early warning detection. Niagara is the best notifier, the fastest. It, it, it behaves in the network like all the other servers. Therefore, the IT departments seem, you know, tend to embrace it more. If you're going out into the security world and you look at some products that are very proprietary, they don't behave in the open environment like Niagara, right? So what we've got is a unique opportunity to take our lessons of what we've learned and apply them to a safety uh, dynamic that no one else in the industry's ever thought of. It's really about 
Can you bring it to my mobile device? Can my mobile device unlock the door? And, and if there's an active shooter, what can I do with that type of message? The, the number one uh, feedback from all first responders and the FBI, Homeland Security, is when we get a shooter alert, 911 call, we have no idea where he's at. Now think about that. We're talking seconds, ladies and gentlemen. We're not talking minutes. We're talking it's 17 minutes is the uh, normal average time in an active shooter event. 17 wow. minutes. Wow. Right? So, so that means from the time he shoots the first shot and someone picks up the phone and calls 911, the clock is running. And now what they said was... We get so many calls, and now you got social media. They're on Twitter. They're on Instagram. There's a shooter. There's a shooter. And where's he at? He's in the gym. No, he's in the cafeteria. No, he's here. And the, the, the first responders are like, the number one thing is we don't know where he is. What shooter detection systems do is lay down a track. their sensors through the building, and they can see it on their, in the squad car. They can see it in mobile command, and the dispatchers can see it through the Internet. On the graphics, the same graphics, that we built with the space temp and the VAV and the camera. So now we link the camera and we've already got the, we've already got the framework. We're just laying down another layer of sensors that immediately escalate to the top of the alarm class, right? So now we're, we're giving first responders, we're taking them from 17 minutes. We can get, now we can get to the shooter, they, in most cases, three and a half minutes. That's a big, big way to save, save, save the lives. You know, it really is, Roger. And, and I tell you what, uh, we're talking Roger Rebenack with Jackson Controls, formerly of Honeywell. And, Roger, you've got a booth here at the Honeywell Momentum events. So I'd like to shift gears a little bit, talk about Momentum, uh, you know, and talk about Honeywell. You know, they've got a great portfolio of products. They always have uh, the best, probably one of the best two-step distribution networks there is. You know, you're going to be some of the best systems integrators here. Talk about the event and why it's important to be here and, and sort of your guys' participation. Well, no, I'm going to talk about it from two, two approaches. One, my former life, you know, as a Honeywell employee and, and, and really a, a proud, I am proud to say, hey, I spent 30 years at Honeywell and they taught me so much that it's made me successful. The second is now I'm on the outside. I'm a customer of Honeywell like you, Eric, and like you, Kenny, right? So now I'm, and gosh, I get more out of them when you're a customer. When you're an employee, it's tough. But when you're a customer, I can say, hey, I'm a diamond. What are you going to do for me? And they're like, Raj, just tell us what, what we need to do. Yeah. So I'm, I'm super excited. And to all the Honeywell management that have been along with me for 32 years, I want to say thank you. I want to say thank you to Mike Keller, I want to say thank you to, to all the folks up at Honeywell that I've worked with for so many years. But I, I'm looking at the sign, Momentum, You've Got Connections, Honeywell, the power of connected. And, and folks, I can tell you without a doubt, Honeywell will win this game. Don't be a naysayer. Honeywell is back. They're investing. They have a strategy. They have a playbook. And they know how to win. And get on, get on that train, because we are back where we were, I said, around when Honeywell bought Tritium around 200, 2006, right? And here we go. We're, we're, we're taking off again. So as a distributor and coming to Momentum, what you're going to see is the power of connectivity. And the showcase uh, product is obviously the new F1 controller. <clears throat> you know, IP-based plant controller, I think 246 points of I.O., uh, you know, pots on there for the analog outputs, uh, handoff auto uh, switches on there. I mean, it is a, uh, a little dongle that you could uh, add a Wi-Fi on. I mean, it's really a platform and it's, it's the first product ever in the world that's native Niagara, meaning it's, it's not a Jace, it's true native Niagara running on a rock solid piece of hardware. Very, very cool, Raj. And for our listeners who might not know, Raj uh, was from Indiana last night. Uh, he gave uh, the, the speech 
the Purdue football team before they went on the field against that? Ohio State. Purdue beat Ohio State. And Raj was there. So uh, Raj is a motivator. I tell you what, it's going to be a great conference. Kenny and I are going to be covering it for the next couple of days. It's going to be great. It's going to be great. Raj, man, thank you so much for all you. Raj was the first PID winner at the, uh, the Control Trends Awards. He's presented awards. He's on the ballot this year for the Impact Award. So uh, vote. Right. Really right. appreciate it. Thanks, everybody. And uh, big thanks. Keep supporting Control Trends. And, you know, it, it, these guys have put their their heart and sweat and life and blood into this thing. And you guys, I, everyone that I talk to, we, we, we are so glad that you guys are doing this. I speak on behalf of everyone, Eric, just a true innovator that this has really made a difference in our industry. Ken Smyers, man, uh, Phil Zito, Roger Rebenak, what a great way to kick this this event off, man. Tell you what, we're going to go to the opening ceremonies and have a have a little something to eat and a little food, and then we'll get back and edit the video so you guys will be able to check it out at home. Yeah, Eric, uh, it's a great way to, to close up. Uh, again, we're, we're down here in Orlando. Uh, gorgeous weather, gorgeous venue. Uh, sorry to all the people that wanted to be here and couldn't make it. Uh, again, sold out event. Uh, and we do have a couple of posts. Uh, please uh, do follow through with the Control Trends uh, episode 288. We have some great uh, information there from some products and some folks there. And some of them are here as uh, vendors, contemporary controls there, for instance. Uh, and then we've got... Uh, Connect Air is here. Uh, we've got uh, Functional Devices is here. As vendors, he's always great, uh, you know, the periphery uh, device manufacturers that make things happen, make jobs work. So it's just going to be a great, great opportunity to uh, spend three days with some of the best people in the business. Well, there you go. That's another week on Control Talk. Now your Smart Buildings video cast and podcast. We appreciate you tuning in. Remember, be bold, stay in control, and just with momentum, stay with some momentum and stay connected.